you're welcome to this lecture. I want you to look at the argument of a complex number. Okay? We already seen that given a complex number z, now um, suppose that z is not zero. Okay? If z is zero, we can't really talk about the argument of the complex number. Okay? So z must be not zero. And z let it be x plus i y. Uh, we've seen that you can represent it as a vector on the on a diagram like this, uh, y z from zero to this, and then um, if it's a vector, we know we know there are modulus of the vector. We have learned that. Now the argument of z uh, is the angle of inclination of z from the real axis. So if I measure from the real axis this angle here, let's call it a theta. Theta is referred to as the argument of z. So, and it's often denoted as this argument of z, which is equal to this angle in here. Theta, which is measured from the real axis. So if it's measured from the real axis in the anti-clockwise direction, okay, then it's a positive angle. If you are measuring in a clockwise direction, it is a negative angle, as we name for the polar point. Very similar to this. Okay, so that is uh, that is referred to the argument of z. Now, uh, note that we can apply some of the techniques from trigonometry here, right? Um, we can find the cosine of theta, for instance. Uh, cos of theta will be adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? That will be s over the absolute value of z. Uh, we can find the sine of the angle of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse, so that will be what y over absolute value of z, and then tan of theta is opposite over um, over adjacent, so that will be x. That will be y, right? Y all over x. Now this is important, okay? So this is often used to um, to find the argument of a complex number. Because from here you can you can find theta which is equal to the tan inverse of y over x. Once you compute this, because x is not zero, once you compute this, then you can find um, the argument of theta. Now note that uh, the cosine and the sine angles are two pi periodic, right? They repeat every um, two pi radians or three sixty degrees. They repeat. Uh, because of that, the argument of the complex number argument represented by this is often not unique, right? It's not unique. So this is important. Otherwise, if I have if I have the angle theta here, all right. Um, if I go around, okay, there's a um, uh, um, theta. And go 360 degrees. Okay, I'll be back to um, I'll be back to the same the same one. All right, so that this theta here can also be represented by theta plus, if you like, multiples of two pi, right? Two pi k of n, where n here is an integer. Okay, so the argument of the complex number is not unique. You can have several angles that are represented. So it will be theta, theta plus 360 degrees, or 2 pi plus you know, 4 pi, you know, you get the same amount. Because it's not unique, uh, we need to define another argument for a complex number so that um, we get unique values. And that is often referred to as um, the principal part of the argument of the complex number. Okay? So let me leave this um, diagram. Get rid of this. So when you talk about the principal part of the argument, then you want to restrict, you want to restrict, restrict the, uh, your argument uh, to some angles. So the principal, principal, the principal part of. Okay. 
the principal class, so principal class of the argument of the complex number. Um, so, so you want to restrict it so that it lies between, uh, if you like, zero and two pi, or zero and this is the degrees, or negative pi and pi. All right. So, and the principal part is often denoted by this. So, the principal part is often the argument a r. So, using capital A as a small a, I'll see. And that is theta, where now theta either lies between um, uh, minus pi and pi, or if you like theta, lie between zero and two uh, pi. So when you re restrict the argument of z to lie in this interval, then the angle you get, okay, is referred to the principal part of the argument. In actual fact, when some textbooks or when some texts tell you to find the, um, the argument of a complex number, often they, they are referring to the principal part of the complex number, okay, by, by, by default. Okay, so, so we know the argument of the complex number which you measure from the real others, you know the principal part when you restrict it to this, to this angles. Okay, so we, um, we want to know how you will actually uh, compute it. So we said that to compute, to compute the, um, the argument of the complex number, you can use you know, the fact that theta is equal to tan inverse of y over x. But you have to be careful. Like in polar coordinates, right? You have to be careful the quadrant where you are. All right? If you are in the first quadrant, it's fine. You can just do this fine tan inverse of y over x, and you get the angle. But if you are not in the first quadrant, you have to be careful the way you measure it, depending on whether you're using this or that. Okay? So let's look at some full examples of finding the argument of um, a complex number. Okay? So examples find. Let's find the principal argument. Well, okay, so before I do this, um, you, can, you can already see the relationship between the principal argument and the argument, right? So, okay, so note, note that um, the argument, okay, this is where you have multiples, right? Um, this is actually of the equal to just the principal argument. N or K, right? Where N is N. So that is the relationship between the principal, the, um, the argument of the complex number and the principal argument. Okay? So if you're asked to find the argument and you know the principal argument, you just add multiples of 2 pi. All right? And then you get, you get the argument. So, um, so that is that is it. So now let's look at um, some examples. So find find the principal find the principal argument of um, z okay for find the principal argument let me do this find the principal argument let's call it theta of z for theta lying between, let's do the 0 to 2 pi, okay? Then you can, you can try, you can try the other one when theta lies between negative pi and pi, okay? Let's see, let's see what, you, what you get. All right, so for, for, um, for this, so let's do A. We're going to probably use a very similar one, so let's say 1 plus i, simple. Illustrate it. Let z be equal to, let's say, um, negative 1 plus i. Let z be equal to <coughs> negative 1, let's say, minus i. Uh, d, find the principal argument of, let's say, 1 and then minus i. Okay, find the, you want to find the principal argument of these complex numbers. 
I'm going to use this to illustrate uh, why you need to be careful when if the complex number is not in the first quadrant. Okay. So let's do this solution. For A, uh, we have V is equal to 1 plus I. So on the complex plane, I uh, is 1 and 1, right? So 1, 1, the point is here. So your Z is there. You want to find this angle. So this is, the, this is our uh, is called argument. So our argument of Z is theta will just be equal to the tan inverse. All right, of y, right, y over x. The absolute value of this is one, this is one, so one over one is one. Um, the inverse of one is i over four, so this is just four. All right, so that's, that's straightforward. And i over four lies in the end. Okay, so in the first quadrant, it's fine. B, you have z. Z is equal to negative one plus i. So here, the sketching on the other diagram, what you have, this is uh, negative, so we are moving this way. So this is my way of this, imaginary. So I have one on this side, and then one there, one negative, one and one. Okay? This is negative. Nice. Okay. So now, the argument you want is actually this, right? Principal argument is this. Yes, this is the angle you are looking for. That's called the theta. But if you do tan inverse, you are getting this acute angle. You are not going to get that. So we can actually calculate this guy here. Let's call this alpha. So you can compute alpha. Once you get alpha, right, then you can get the, um, the angle theta. How do you do that? Once we know this, we know that from here all the way there is pi. Right? So take pi and subtract alpha from it and that gives you theta. Okay, so that's how you do it. So let's find alpha. Alpha here, tan, of course, tan alpha, the absolute value of this is 1, and 1, so alpha is the tan inverse of 1, and that is equal to pi over 4. Okay, as you can guess. Okay. So this is pi over 4. Therefore, theta, the principal argument, is going to be pi, that's all of this, minus that, minus pi over 4. And that is called 3 pi over 4. Okay? So, and that gives me the principal argument of this complex number. So, when you are in the, when you are in the second quadrant, you see that you have to subtract this angle in order to get um, the argument that you want. Then finally, we want to do, no, okay, the third one, C. C is, uh, we have, uh, we have Z is equal to, I think, minus one and minus I. Now this is minus minus, so that is in this quadrant, right? Okay, so this is the Z. Really imaginary. And so the argument, the principal argument that we want to compute is this. This is our theta. Alright? How do we get that? Now we can we can calculate this guy and that be our alpha. Once we get alpha, we can add it to pi, right? This is pi, we add alpha to it, and then you get the theta. Okay? So alpha as you can guess, it's going to be pi over 4, 1 to 1. Therefore, your theta principal is going to be pi plus pi over 4, and this is equal to 5 pi over 4. Okay? Note that if we wanted the principal argument to lie between negative pi and pi, then the angle we'll be needing is this angle. Okay? Because this does not lie in that interval. We will be, be finding this negative angle here. That's just by the way. So you can try that. So 
We are good with this. Excuse me. So, so we are done with um, we are done with uh, C. Now, the last one T, our Z is equal to I think it's one and minus I. So that is uh, here. Real and imaginary. This is positive, so that is one there, and then negative. So it's here. So there you go. Okay. So again, we measure from the positive real others. So the argument we want to be that is this angle. Again, to get this, we compute this um, this acute angle alpha. Again, you can easily show that alpha is going to be pi over 4. Okay? So how do we get theta? Now know that from here all the way around is 2 pi. But we know this. So you're going to get 2 pi and subtract alpha from it. That is pi over 4. And that is how you get theta. So theta is going to be 2 pi minus pi over 4. And that gives you this 8 minus this side, 7 pi over 4. Alright? And that gives you the principal argument for Z. Alright? So that's how we compute the argument of a complex number. Um, we'll come back to this later where we'll do some more examples. Alright? But for the time being, you can try this once and try to find the argument of the principal argument in the case where it lies in this case. Okay? So see you uh, next time.